Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the top right eye for even more nice links. And yeah, so today what we're going to do is we're going to work with animation. And it's going to be quite simple and it's not going to be like I usually do it. But it's going to be a way for you to learn as a first step. And then I'll tell you how I usually do it. And probably in future projects, we'll do it in the proper way with a animation component. Uh, but not too much detail on that. Let's first of all recap what we did in the last video. I have my little texture sheet here. Texture sheet, uh, it's a hard word to say. But you see it's pretty small, so we're going to have to do some scaling on here in the game. Uh, nevertheless, we have an idle texture sheet or an idle animation. We have a running animation, a jumping animation, falling animation uh landing animation kind of all of this is kind of this is going down animation um and this is the this is the landing animation so we have a few animations to play around with we won't use them all but probably we'll do some running and all this and then i'll leave it to you to do the rest we'll see how we do with that anyway once we have our first little player walking around here not really walking just moving around you'll see that the player is just you know just standing there right uh, and and the texture rect is off so i did a little experimentation and the way i did it was just to go back to this if you see your textures sometimes you might forget what what each texture size is what uh, each what do you call it frames sizes and what you can do then is you can take the total dimensions of your image and usually you'll have it set up in a way where everything is the same distance away from one another. So you'll have a 400 in the width and height 300, right? So all you do is you calculate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Divided by the, the width, which is 400. And then you'll get one size of this. Or you can, you can do that on the running one, actually. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That will give you a 40 in the width. And then... The height was 300, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 3, so that would be 50 in the height. There we go. Sorry for talking too much about that, but let's just put that into 40, 50 in our texture rect here, the first frame. Let's do that, and you'll see that works perfectly. You see that? That's amazing. So there we go. That's one thing. Now we want to just increase the size of the sprite a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sprite dot set scale here and I'm going to do maybe 1.5, 1.5F so we can see what's going on. Sometimes it's really hard to see what's going on. If you run this again, you'll see that you don't have to do anything with the texture itself. Okay, that's even too small. Let's do a 2.5, 2.5, run that. You'll see, okay, now that looks a little better. That's how I want to do it. That's perfect, amazing. Good, good job guys, all right. So what we want to do as a next step is we want to create a little function called init. First of all, void init animations like that. And then we're going to do an update animations function. I'm going to put it above movement, update animations. Or should we do it below? You know what? We're going to do it below movement. Movement is more of a basic thing than animation. So first of all, in it animations, we might not have to use that just yet, but we'll update the animations for sure. Good, good. Now, just to give you an idea of what I usually would do here is I wouldn't do it like this. I would have update animations, but I wouldn't make if statements in here like I'm about to do. What I would do is I'll make a bunch of classes here. I'd make an animation class, then I'd make an animation uh, animation a component class and then I have a whole component structure so you can fit in different animations in different sets but we're gonna do it hard-coded here like you would probably do in a school project and then it'll be up to you to put that into separate classes and play around with until I make a video on that as well but let's just go ahead and do the idle animation first of all and to do that what we're gonna do is we have our current frame all right we have our current frame now we don't have a real boolean to check if we're moving or not. So I'm just going to create that. I'm going to create a little boolean in our our player here. I'm just going to call it bool moving. Okay. And when we initialize our player here, we don't have an init variable. So I'm just going to do init 
variable init variables function just so we get that down define that and in this i'm going to say this moving equals false because we're probably going to be not moving at any time when we start the game of course you want to call these in your in your player right here so first call init init variables and then i want you to call this init animations boom very nice very nice okay very good that's how we want to do it and then we'll do moving false now anytime we're moving anytime we're moving what we're going to do is we're going to set it to true all right we're going to set it to true this moving equals false set it to false and then if we're moving equals true in any of these all right so control c that do it like this a very primitive way of doing doing animation with different booleans and all that stuff what we can do later is to add some kind of a state state variable which will tell us what we're doing but this is just the first step guys it's an easy fix later on don't worry this is just to show you how this works so there we go let's go ahead and do this update animations like that okay very good now anytime if this moving equals false i'll write it out like this usually i do a little little uh exclamation mark here for moving false but i'll write it out just so we see what's going on so idle animation all right this is going to be our idle animation and of course animations are going to be else ifs because you know of course if it's not moving you can only have one animation at a time obviously so there we go we have a current frame here and what's happening is that we'll we'll need to animate in different ways we'll have to hard code our animations depending on what's going on. So if it's idle, of course we know what the max is going to be, depending on our sprite sheet here. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five. All right, one, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna to have to write that in somehow. We're gonna to have to put that in somehow. And that's gonna be hard coded in here. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if this current frame dot left all right so we're gonna move the frame to the left that's our current frame if our current frame left is greater or equal to all right greater or equal to now what would the left here be what would that be well that would be one two three four and they're 40 so let's do a calculation here 5 times 40, that would be 200, right? That would be right here. But I want it right there. So that's minus 40, so 160. All right, 160. So if it's 160.f, then I'm going to do this current frame dot left equals 0. All right, boom, perfect. And you need to have a sort of animation timer here as well. You can't just do it. We'll do it without it first. I'll show you what's going to happen then. What we're going to do is we're going to say this current frame plus equals 40 dot F. All right. In each frame. That's what we're going to do. All right. Dot left. Boom. And it's going to move like that to the right. And if it reaches this point, it's going to be set to zero. And this is hard coded, of course, for that value for our idle animation. Now let's try this. Okay, of course it didn't work because what we want to do is at the end of update animation, we want to say this sprite dot set set texture rect to this current frame. Boom. Run that again. And you'll see how fast it's actually moving. It's actually doing it, but it's moving very fast, moving a little too fast. A little too fast so we're gonna make an animation timer here and that's a very easy easy way to do it what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sf clock all right animation timer very simple very simple all right and this is gonna be our first use of our init animations here we're gonna do a this animation timer dot restart okay boom very nice once that's restarted it's gonna start running so we're going to have to do a little check here in here if this animation timer 
dot get elapsed time dot add seconds. So let's do it at every half second. All right. At every half seconds is greater than or equal to 0 0.5. Okay. And that's a double, I think, as seconds. No, it's a float. Okay, great. So that's when we're going to update all of this stuff. Only, only when Oops, sorry, I, put, I should put this below. Make sure to put that below so don't want, we don't set the texture rect unnecessarily. And here we go. But of course, when you do this, what you want to do is you want to do this animation timer dot restart right there. So when it's past half a second, you restart it. That's how you want to do it. Okay. You can also do as milliseconds and do 500, but this makes more sense to me. Once you do that, this should start working pretty much. Let's run that. Okay, and you'll see it's pretty slow. It's half a second. So it's pretty, pretty slow. So if you want to make that a little faster, here we go. And then you'll see it's a little nicer, you see? But when I'm moving the character, that's not animating. You see, it's not animating. But that looks beautiful. I really like that. That's our first animation, guys and girls. That's our first animation. All right, beautiful. And the cool thing is... We, we only need one as you as you can notice here we're only doing to the right side but what we're gonna do is when we move our character to the other side to the left side uh what what's gonna happen is we're gonna flip flip the script on this we're gonna flip the sprite so we don't need a second set for running left all right there's a way to flip this flip the sprite you don't have to do that extra animation all that stuff there you go guys and girls pretty much that's it for today i'd say the first animation is running it looks really nice i mean you can just sit and watch that can't you i mean let's just do one thing before we end here let's let's go crazy right here man let's let's go let's go ham let's go into game let's go into our init player where's player cpp and it's sprite here let's go 5.5 you know like huge sprite right here let's see what's going on let's see that beautiful animation look at that that's an anim that's beautiful that's animating just like we want it to, right? So no issues there, just like we want it. And yeah, there you go, guys and girls. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one, right? Bye-bye.